Welcome, one and all, to one of the first episodes of our discussion series called Novo Symposium, a business sketch under Northeast India and Beyond, NEIB, an economic firm. I'm Wobong Mwa, the promoter and director of Highland Down Media, an online broadcast media house in Kohima, Nagaland. We have here around with us five young up upcoming entrepreneurs from Kohima, Dimapur, and Futsuro. Thank you all for coming and welcome to this show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And besides that, we have a seasoned and experienced entrepreneur, Mr. Mele Pucho, who has initiated a series of businesses here in Nagaland. And out of the many businesses, Mele Pucho is the proprietor of Symphony Academy of Music, having four branches in Kohima, and Symphony Cafe, and he is also the president of the Northeast Beauty Pageant Organization of Northeast India, and he's the president of Beauty and Aesthetics Society of Nagaland, BASN, and he's the president of Musicians Guild in Kohima, Nagaland. And finally, he's the managing director of Harmonic Voices in, in Nagaland. Thank you for coming, Malay. Thank you, thank you for having me. And uh, so for today, five of us, five young upcoming, upcoming entrepreneurs from Kohima, Nimapur, and Futsuro, they are here to interact with Mele and with one another about their business, their stories, and how their entrepreneurships could improve and uh, sorry, strengthen, grow, and prosper and succeed in their businesses. So hopefully we'll all learn something and as well as our viewers will learn, learn something new. Our discussion today, Novo Symposium, is derived from Novo meaning new and Symposium meaning meeting of a group of people with opinions and ideas. So today our symposium is the pilot episode of the weekly series under Northeast India and Beyond, which is an economic forum or think tank initiated by the Highlander media and like-minded people from outside the region, business people. The goal of Northeast India and Beyond is to discuss and come up with strategies to improve on our way to business and entrepreneurship success and usher in broadly shared opportunity and prosperity, including a vision to create 10,000 new jobs in Nagaland and Northeast India. We strongly believe that the combined insights and expertise and knowledge shared on Novo Symposium and on our NIB forum and think tank can be a beacon or a guide for other upcoming entrepreneurs and even bureaucrats and policy makers of Northeast India. So today as a facilitator, I am here to introduce this new show, the new show under NEIB and then leave the table and oversee the behind the scenes media. So later on, the main discussion will be between our entrepreneurs here and Mr. Mele Pucho here. Mr. Mele is the seasoned entrepreneur who will take up the role of mentor and guide. Thank you all once again and sorry for the long introduction. <laughs> and uh, so before we start, before we start, let us firstly introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. So starting from on the right, I would uh, request each of us to introduce ourselves. Uh, hello, my name is Pravishri. Uh, I'm the proprietor of Moving the Price. Bovi Enterprise is a partnership business. My partner is Buni Krucha. He is also an entrepreneur. He runs a farm. Bovi Enterprise is a tourist-based business. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Imser La Sangler, and I'm the proprietor of One X One Nagaland. Uh, I'm an eco-brainer, and yeah, that focus on sustainability, and it is a homegrown brand from Nagaland. Hello, everyone. I'm David Mori. I made jewelry. I made handmade jewelry. Uh, I have a label called Sabin Muri Design. Mm. Uh, I'm Akho, a self taught portrait artist. I specialize in realism. There is uh, graphite, charcoal, and pestles. Mm. Hello, I am uh, Lindy Nyanen, and I run multiple businesses, one of which is in the field of uh, food. And um, the name of one of my restaurant, cafe, is uh, Tipo Cafe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be focusing on that today. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all for introducing yourself. You are, we are here from a variety of businesses, very interesting, yeah. all from different fields. And uh, I think all of us have a challenge here to, to be able to uh, discuss meaningfully. And uh, I would suggest once again that uh, you may be from different fields of uh, the business, but still then, from your perspective, from your business side, if you have any suggestions, any, any thoughts, any, any observations, then please share it freely also. So before we start our discussion in earnest, and before we open up discussion, I have here two, two questions, which I open up for everyone present here, including Mr. Mele Pucho. The questions are, the two questions are, 
Number one, what do you think the present generation is struggling with? Okay, that's number one. The second question is, would more skilled and educated Naga entrepreneurs mean a better economy for our state? Those are the two questions. I would like to open it up. What do you think the present generation is struggling with in terms of business, in terms of adjusting to the hardships, the toils, the, you know, the challenges of business? Yeah, anybody with the first question, what do you think the present generation is struggling with? I should say that the present, when it comes to business, I should say like funding and experience, that's a struggling point for the young generation for the Nagas. As Nagas is the first generation business, so a lot of people are not into business right now. So right now, uh, experience and uh, funding, or like to start up fund, that's a struggling stage. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay, I think uh, in my view, I think a uh, lot of the youngsters, they don't, uh, or they don't support the term dignity of labor. I think that's one view I want to share. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, according to me, it would be like the raw materials and the market is very limited mm. for anyone who is starting out. Yes, exactly. So, the Gen Z and Millennials, we have to toil hard and we have to search for the markets really well. For example, raw material from your side would be? Um, since I make thoughts and I have a brand, a clothing brand, okay. so obviously raw materials, it's really hard to get here itself from Nagaland. So we need to find quality materials, check sustainability because everything that I'm doing is solely focused on sustainability. So those are some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. But have you thought about, you know, uh, exploring in the neighboring states or even, you know, yeah, uh, in like, some of the cities? Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah. I get all of my raw materials, products and everything from Tanja. Yeah, that's so what, mm. what we could have gotten from our own state, I'm getting it from another state. Yeah, yeah. So if Naglan had that value and uh, open market for entrepreneurs like me, it would have been really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I will also say something. Uh, firstly, I'm very happy to know that you know all of you are employed. You know, you are not unemployed, right? Yes. For me, I think uh, unemployed, being unemployed, you know, is a choice. That's what I always tell my friends. You know, you know, there's so many things to do to today. You know. Uh, when we talk about job, it's not just about you know having government jobs or working in an office, you know, or something like that. You know, but we can do so many things today. But our friend has already shared, you know, dignity of labor. Uh, we have problem, you know. Uh, I think it, I should say identity crisis. You know, uh, we want to copy everything, but we don't want to work hard. Nah? And uh, there's so many things to do, but we are all looking for you know big jobs. You know, which is not going to come to all of us. Uh, government jobs are not going to, be, going to be enough for all of us. You know. Uh, small jobs, you know, small business, that's what I will always encourage to all of you and the viewers here as well. Uh, when I started, you know, I was also, you know, a vegetable seller. Most of you will not know. Uh, many of my friends will not know. I was also, you know, a vegetable seller once upon a time. That's how I started, you know. So I think dignity of labor, that's where it comes, you know, not feeling uh, afraid or not feeling shy to do, you know, small jobs. I think that's where our Naga youths are struggling, I should say, because we want to do something, we all want to earn money, but we're ashamed, you know, to do some of the jobs, you know, that, 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 that they think is, uh, may not be qualified or that they think is, you know, uh, maybe, maybe a shame in, 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 the, in, the, in the eyes of the public or the family as well, so yeah. Yeah, those are good insights to start with. Please, anybody else? Um, I think uh, I'll add on the mental aspect of that. I think um, status quo is very important in our society. Status, seeking status. So getting to the field of business, I think um, it's not as respected still as much as getting a government job. And so uh, we are unable to fully focus on business because a lot of young people, I think they still doubt, even after getting into business, whether um, they are doing the right thing, whether they should continue pursuing a government job. I think the mental aspect is also very uh, important. I think there's a challenge that we face because we feel that maybe getting into the field of business is not as 
it's not as respected as um, getting a government job. I think uh, recently, uh, Mr. Mr. Tejulo, when he was speaking to us uh, on the same topic, he was saying, yeah, our society gives much importance to government jobs, celebrate government jobs, but we don't celebrate entrepreneurship. But actually, the main economy, the growth of the economy, prosperity of the society will come from the local economy and from entrepreneurs. So, you know, like we are perhaps having another uh, another view where we are not having the broad view but we are just looking at individual status and so government jobs and then the whole village uh, celebrating the person getting a good post and so instead of uh, because the economy is coming from the prosperity and growth of the economy is coming from entrepreneurs and from the economy so I think we are having a wrong view which hopefully will uh, educate one another educate our society about this also and uh, any other questions? Uh, any other? Any other feedback? Okay. Okay. One question I would like to ask you is like, why did you choose to be in this field? You know, was government jobs was always your first priority, or you know, you have decided that you know you want to be in business? For me, I started with a passion. Okay. Like I grew up with it. Okay. I always love to do what I love. Mm. It's being designing. Okay. So. Yeah, that's how I started. Yes, yes. started with the passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like our brother has said, you know, uh, many a times it's business is always the second or third choice, right? Mm -hmm. We all try government jobs. We all try to do something big, and then when we could not do that, suddenly we decide to do business, right? So that's what he was also saying. So I wanted to know as well. How about the others? Uh, for me, I should say like uh, business was my aim in life since mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. So I just commerce from class eleven to twelve, and then till bachelor I was to make commerce. So mm -hmm. I was like. My wife was uh, to do the business since high school. Okay, okay, great. My yeah. subject was, you know, was a bit of work. Mm. I did my um, master's in politics. Mm. So my aim would be like um, working under my own. Mm. So I have even partner like uh, the one I'm work, uh, collaborating or working under with, the Merlin Dillo. He's an artist mm -hmm. as well as uh, he owns the printing press, right? And employ around 15 people. Mm. 15 people. Okay. So my aim was, or my hobby was to um, focus more on, more on art and then grow along with it. But since like a cousin of mine pursued the um, fine arts and then she see he's quite uh, like, he's really doing well, but, but the view among our family, we don't really support him. So I had no choice but to take political science mm -hmm. and then did my masters. But I'm not being an artist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your first choice, right? Yeah. After completing your studies. Okay. Is this your first choice to be in business, or you know, or you have already tried for other jobs and then, you know, coming to business right. after right. failing to, to go through all these things? Yeah. yeah. So um, right after completing completing my masters, yes. Um, I read these two books. Yeah. Uh, sports of business: How to Win in the Sports of Business by Mark Cuban, and that really taught me how to work really hard, like how hard work is really, really important to get there. No matter what we do, work, work, work. Mm -hmm. So that led me to another book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then after reading that book, it just altered my life right away. Because I think specifically it had, I had an aim in life to get into government jobs or nothing like that. I never had. So right after my studies, after reading those two books, I just, after that I read like a series of books, but um, those two directed me towards the field of business. So mm -hmm. right after completing my studies, there were uh, uh, private jobs available for me. Mm -hmm. I, I was studying the league. So uh, research associate uh, jobs were available. They were paying good. But I knew that eventually I was going to come back to Nagra. So I said, uh, I, told my, I told myself that let me just go start. Because even after, I mean, I'm going to come back to Nagaland sooner or later. So why not go and uh, mm -hmm. Survey the market, learn the market, and start right away. So I never came back to Nagaland with the hope of finding one job. Mm -hmm. This is straight into business. Okay. okay, great, great to know that that all of you, you know, this is your first priority. And how are, how how are you all doing now in your business? Is it successful or still struggling or how is it? I should say I'm doing really good uh, okay. <coughs> because of the platform mm -hmm. you provided, right? Okay. 
So um, even to get the climb, also to get the work done, right? Or material routine. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Wow. Once again, was it as a graphic a artist or what? What? Um, sorry, portrait oh. artist. Yeah. Portrait okay. artist. Okay. Great. Okay. You were saying uh, we really need to these days upgrade ourselves mm -hmm. because. Uh, like reading books is uh, help us a lot and because uh, the internet is at our fingertips and you can learn anything new courses you can upgrade yourself especially books i think because the successful business people they read at least one book a week or like you know yeah. two books in one month or stuff like that so i think we older guys <laughs> we also need to do that yeah, need to catch up. <laughs> so anyway so actually the next question which we'd like to discuss the second question is uh, would more skilled and educated entrepreneurs, would that mean a better economy for our state? What do you think? Of course, why not? To our opinion, I should say that's uh, what the state government should be like, uh, giving priority, uh, mainly these days, because more than 10,000 or like 10,000 graduates every year from Nagaland itself. And then how do we find all those in the NPC or like government sector? That's nearly impossible. And then one factor that's affecting so much is uh, like the taxation or say like we're not able to have big companies or like big corporates in Nagaland. So like unemployment when we compare to other states, we are very like uh, leaking so much behind. And even our neighbor state, they are doing so much well in business. Just an example from my world, like even Assam, they are doing too well, much more like 10 times more than the Nagaland state, I should say, even in business. So like, uh, like even employment sectors, we have a lot of like hindrance to say even in funding to get from the state government alone we have uh, there are, uh, a lot of issues out there as well and then even to get uh, proper guidance a very less mentor to guide the young people so i should say like uh, the state government should be doing much more to help the young entrepreneurs so that who are like doing thousands and like uh, thousands of graduate uh, past year like graduation or like search for entrepreneurship, like they find it so much well and then uh, even like the Nagaland will do well in GDP uh, like production so that they will contribute to the whole India. So this, that is uh, very much in the, uh, in the state right now, I should say, for that. Yeah, the government on their side also, they are trying a lot of things, but uh, you know, perhaps in some places they are succeeding a bit, but in some places they don't have enough practical know-how, hands-on on the, on the ground, you know, the sort of knowledge. So they are, I mean like, so to say, they are trying their best, but they are doing it from the distance. They are not working on the ground like you entrepreneurs are, mm -hmm. where the rubber hits the ground. Huh? Mm -hmm. okay, can you please repeat that question? <laughs> uh, yeah. Would more skilled and educated Nagar entrepreneurs, would it be better for the economy of a state? Supposing yourself, would you like to be more skilled and more, more educated, or you, you think you can handle it? Your, your opinion. No? Oh, yeah. Just your opinion. In my opinion, I will focus more on the skills because uh, in Nagaland we give more importance to degree rather than having. Like in Nagaland, um, we support uh, people who are having degree, degree, master degree or whatever degree more than their skills. I mean, more than the other people ha having skills who can do um, anything for living or who has um, skills in not making anything. Actually, like most of the very rich entrepreneurs, billionaires, they don't have education, okay? Mm -hmm. Even in our society. Yeah, that's what See, I they, want to... they start yeah. only class 10 or even metric fail or even uh, class 12. So they become so successful. Uh, what you are saying and what you are also trying to say is very true. Uh, mm -hmm. Education is important, but uh, it, it's not the most important when it comes to business, right? Yeah. Uh, without, even without education, you know you can do business. Uh, you don't need a degree to sell tea, for example. Na? Selling tea is also a very good business. Yeah. And, you know, I always tell, uh, encourage my friends, why not, you know, if you, can't have, if you don't have money to invest in big business, why, why don't you just start a tea store, you know, sell, sell tea on the streets or on the markets, you know. Tea selling is also like, you know, it has got a very good, very good revenue as well. Who knows, you may become the Prime Minister like Modi. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Tea seller, just, a, just an example of, of, of a tea seller, you know. Uh, you know, these days, uh, when, wherever you go, you will see non-locals selling tea, you know, yeah, with sure. a kettle. They'll go to the markets, you know, they even come to my, my school, my restaurants, they sell tea. They sell the tea with 10 rupees per cup, example, all right? 
And uh, I have done a rough study on that as well because I was so interested on you know what is really encouraging them to sell tea every day for for a bottle. You know they have been doing that for five six years as well. So the cup of tea that they sell, you know, they sell it at ten rupees. You know, and the cost of making that tea is just about four rupees. It seems, you know, four rupees. So in one cup of tea you are getting six rupees profit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Six rupees profit you are getting, and easily in a day they are selling about two hundred cups of tea. Easily. You go to a marketplace, you know, a big shopping mall. Everyone is, all the shopkeepers are drinking one cup of tea. Easily 200 cups they are selling. So, you know, if you are selling 200 cups each day, you know, each day you are getting, if you are getting a profit of six rupees, you are getting 1,200 rupees profit in a, in a day, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you work for 26 days, excluding the Sundays, you are getting, you know, a salary of about 31,200, you know, yes, just by selling tea. You know, and I don't think the Greece, I am, I'm sure that they are not, you know, educated, you know, they have not done the studies, you know, so I think education is important, but it is not the most important when it comes to, you know, business as well. So anyone can do business. That is true, in one way, education is not important, but anyone can do business that is, I mean, open for discussion. Actually, everyone is not made to be a businessman, yeah. perhaps, yeah. because it requires a different set of skills, mm -hmm. different mindset, different... Mm -hmm determination, mm -hmm. hard work, and of whatever course, you course. are, you know, like, mm -hmm. so uh, some people, they will more, they will prefer to become a musician or to become a bureaucrat, but, but at the same time, because our society really needs businesses, really needs entrepreneurs, we are here to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. So that is the main idea of uh, this discussion. Mm -hmm. I think that's all for this question, and I'll be moving out and going behind the scenes, but uh, I would, uh, the next, the next part of our discussion is where you, Please introduce yourselves and talk more about your businesses one by one. Mm -hmm. I'll move out. Thank you all. Okay. Please continue. Northeast India and Beyond Institute's mission to inform, encourage and empower individuals and businesses to seek solutions and pursue economic activity that will ensure broadly shared prosperity and opportunity to impact the economy of Northeast India positively. I did not start big, like I, I said in the beginning. I started very small. When I started my first business, you know, I had only 16,000 rupees in my bank. That was way back in 2008. You know, uh, I came back after doing my post graduation from Pune, and after that, you know, I did try for NPSC once, all right. I did try because that was the pressure from the family. But after that, I suddenly got interested in business, and that was always my, my first priority. But I didn't have money to invest in big business, so you know, I had a, a saving of about sixteen thousand. I still remember. So I decided to start very small. You know, I started selling vegetables during that time. And you know, selling vegetables, I didn't sell every day, but I was selling vegetables once a week to about 200 to 300 customers, you know. I give home delivery. That was the business that I did. And till today, you know, vegetable business, selling vegetable business is a very profitable business. Yeah. For example, today, <clears throat> today uh, I'm just going to give an example. Today in the market, you know, the market price of onion is 55 to 60 rupees, even today, all right? Mm -hmm. And the wholesale price, you know, if you buy wholesale in, in, in Kohima, you get it by around 28 rupees or 29 rupees. So just by selling one kg of vegetable, there's a profit of about 30 rupees minimum, all right? So those days I, went, I was doing that, you know? And when you have to go and buy vegetables from Dimapur, it's more cheaper. And again, if you go to Assam, again, it's more cheaper. You know, if the, if the veg price of onion is uh, in a wholesale is 30 rupees here. If you go to Assam, you'll get it by 15 rupees. It's like that. Huh? So I was doing that in the beginning. And I was doing once a week delivery to about 200 to 250 customers. You know, I, I, I buy all the vegetables, you know, I go and give it to, to them in their homes. And easily in a month, I was earning around 20,000. That was my first business. And I realized that, you know, during that time, uh, when I came back after my studies, you know, uh, somehow I was offered, you know, a job of an LDA also in a government office. Of course, that's true back there only. <laughs> but I decided, you know, after experiencing that business, vegetable business, I was, you know, in a week, I was doing only once in a week delivery and I was earning about 20,000, which, which is like better than the salary of an LDA. That time, you know, it, the LDA salary was about 15,000, 16,000. And I was earning, you know, 20,000 in a month. So I decided, you know, to, to put my, 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 my time in business. And so that was my first business. I did it for about one and a half years. 
I was doing it very successfully, but I'm a musician, you know, so I was, was always interested in music. And during that time, uh, there was a need to have a music school in Kohima because there was no music school that was doing, you know, all this classical and contemporary music during that time. So I started my school in the year 2011. Um, now it's already 11 years today. And uh, now I have four branches in Kohima itself. And today I have about 52 employees. You know, I have a cafe as well. I have 52 employees. So that's why I always, you know, believe in starting slow and starting small. Because when you start big, there's a very big risk involved as well. I feel sorry for people who, who started their business two years back, three years back, you know, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Many of them, you know, they had to close down. So there's a risk factor involved, you know. Mm -hmm. So I will always encourage, you know, everyone, if you're interested in, 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 in business, to start very small. So there's less risk, at the same time, you know, you will learn. And I always say experience is the best teacher, right? Yes. You know, you, 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 you experience and then you learn. And that's how, you know, uh, you, your skill will improve in that way. Experience is the best teacher, right? So that is a very brief introduction of, you know, what, what, what uh, I'm doing. Uh, at, the, at the moment, you know, I'm running four schools and running one cafe as well. And I'm into a lot of events as well. I do a lot of music events, uh, fashion shows, beauty pageants. I do a lot of events. But like I said, I started very small. Uh, I was a vegetable seller and that's how I started. Yeah. Okay. Mine is like moving the price. So mine is mainly based on tourism. So uh, moving the price under that, we provide like a footing, lodging, mm -hmm. homestay. We provide tent, taxi service, and then like uh, the, even tour guide yeah, within the uh, village or to visit Kapamtsu. And then uh, we have two communi community service, like mm -hmm. social service under moving the price. So one, the first one is tree plantation, and the second one is uh, community library. So very interestingly, like community library was uh, like uh, we started with one of the one of our friend. Uh, his name is Ako. He is the first uh, one to start community library in Nagaland. If you know him, Kiguma, I believe, most probably mm -hmm. from there. And then, so he came, he donated some books, and then we started the community library even under the enterprise. And mine is a tourist based business, so. We uh, find like uh, as of now it's not that popular, so we find local uh, tourists mainly coming to our place to say within Nagaland mm -hmm. and like secondly from the uh, uh, other state, other state to say, and then internationally we uh, like in a year we sometimes some people come, and then so uh, mine is mainly about tourism. Mm -hmm. So how do you sustain your business? Because like. I think uh, your business is very seasonal, right? Yes. Uh, Sometimes during season it'll be good, but how do you sustain your business throughout the year? Uh, actually, like uh, even my friend or me, we are into different business. So like uh, like this movie enterprise is a uh, new startup uh, by this year only. Since okay. April, in April twenty nine we started, mm -hmm. and then so it's like a new business. So like he also he also uh, run farms. Yeah, uh, in the village, I also run a store at my own hometown. So, like, uh, this right now, this movie enterprise is uh, like, what to say, like, uh, part time or like, what to say, like, it's just a starting stage where we don't depend much on that. We are oh. at the initial stage building the uh, enterprise, and we are uh, like planning to like host festival or like events and tie up with Hornbill and so on. So mm -hmm. right now we're at the starting stage. We have a lot of like long journey to go to say. Okay, okay. Um, and what are, what are the struggles in your business? Uh, I should say like mainly we right now for tourism we need a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but we don't have enough fund right now. And then uh, the second is like um, road or condition. Uh, that's the under factor I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, those challenges we don't have much right now. Okay, okay. Good, good to hear that, and good to know that you know we are also starting small. You know. Uh, I think you're not thinking too big as of now. Yeah. Like I said, it's just part time for now. No? Yes. So you can just take it one step at a time, and then I'm sure you know your business will grow. Uh, tourism business is also very nice, uh, and it's growing here, especially in, in, in Nagaland as well. A lot, of, a lot of tourists coming here every year, no? So, but take it one step at a time and take it slow. That will be my advice, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm the proprietor of One X One Nagaland, mm. which is also known as One by One. Oh. So, like, I sell anything and everything from the page Instagram. So uh, since I sell a lot of things, I named it as 1x1, one one which X1. means one by one. Mm. So um, way back when I was a kid, I've always been so impressed by business and the um, notion of earning from something that you have done through your skills. Mm. 
So uh, I used to make small small notepads and sell it at rupees to uh, to my classmates and also neighbors. So they were really kind to support me back then. And after a gap of some years, uh, during my high school, we used to have this um, period in. Since it's a Catholic school, we have this period, uh, also known as SUPW, yeah. where we do a lot of skills, mm -hmm. we, we learn a lot of skills mm -hmm. through that. So uh, we used to have cross-stitch, embroidery, and tailoring. Mm -hmm. So I was so in impressed by embroidery. Mm -hmm. And I started embroidering in tote bags since uh, 2017, but I was just staying low and then um, selling it to my close friends only. Mm -hmm. So. In 2019, plastic was banned yeah. during that time. So mm -hmm. everyone was like green Nagaland and they were using all these boring tote bags everywhere in the mm -hmm. market. So I was like thinking if I come up with a tote bag that can customize something that they like according to their preference and taste, then I'm sure this market might just <laughs> boom. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I thought and yeah, it came into being and I... Um, got some courage to open my Instagram page and from there I started selling uh, customized tote bags. Mm. So I embroider as well as print mm. and I also paint it. Okay. So I take myself as an artist. Mm. So I'm an illustrator and my art styles are abstract mm. and uh, expressionism. Mm. So through that uh, I gained a lot of uh, customers and yeah, this year on February, I launched my own brand uh, and then I make t-shirts, hoodies and I've like come up with my first collection which is also known as Ethereal Collection. Mm. So that focus on Greek gods and ethereal beings and uh, with all the support that I got from family members and friends, it was a successful one yeah. and I'm working on my next um, collection as well mm -hmm. so, so that's how <laughs> who are your customers you say you don't have a store right yeah I don't it's only online right? just online yeah. your customers are your friends your family members or yeah um, at first it was my friends and my family members yeah. but after opening an online page mm -hmm. it became known to a lot of people from mm -hmm. different states from India okay and uh, yeah luckily it even reached Japan mm -hmm. this year oh. one of my tote bags <laughs> so really nice. I'm happy about it mm -hmm. and uh, if we have some you know I uh, international delivery system which is very uh, will be very easy mm. so maybe i want to expand my market internationally as well mm. okay that's very nice and your challenges are struggling is it you're, you have said that you don't get materials yeah that is only, materials, only struggles that's having, my huh? struggle yeah mm -hmm. but the best is always you know to, to get the materials you know from the place where it's cheap right yeah. even if it's available in nagaland i don't think you will get it at a cheap rate because we cannot produce, you know, in, in big quantities like that, no? And you will not get varieties, you will not get quality, right? So I think your kind of business, it's still the best, you know, to, to get the materials, you know, from where it's cheap, right? Yes, what do you say? I have to do a lot of traveling for yes, that. Yes. I have friends who, who are doing, you know, a lot of uh, things that you are doing. Mm -hmm. Merchandise, you know, who have their own uh, outlet here, uh, who are doing a lot of stitching and everything. Mm -hmm. They do the same thing and then they're doing it very successfully. Uh, you are working yourself or you have employed some I other have one people employee. Well? One employee. Yeah, since everything okay. is handmade, I can't do it everything yes, myself. Yes, yes, yes. So I have one of my besties who help me and then I, I pay her when she works for me. Okay, okay, yeah. Your kind of business is like uh, consistency is very important, right? Exactly. Sometimes, you know, when, 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 when you are there, when you are producing, you know, your, your, your things, then it's good. But sometimes when you don't, don't get time to, to, to make your things, then, you know, your business will fall like that. Nah? Yeah. So being consistent is very important. Nah? I think having, having lots of employees and then, you know, keeping the business running is also very important, I think, in your kind of business. Nah? Mm -hmm. And I also, also have to be a content creator. Yes, so exactly. Make yeah. videos, reels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to be an actress myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also tie up with some big events, like because online is also very good. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I think you are yet to reach out to the uh, big group. I think so. Tie up with some very big events. There are a lot of events now yeah. where you can provide, you know, merchandise and also sell in in in, in bulk as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, selling in bulk will make a lot of difference. No, instead of selling in few numbers, selling in big numbers makes a lot of difference in your kind of business. No? Yes, yes. When we, whenever, whenever we go to Vishal Mart, example, 
we buy two real juice and then you get 40 percent off right <laughs> because they, they, they can give that because they sell in bulk mm -hmm. but the same thing the same the same concept right if you go to a wholesale market even here in boc if you buy uh, real juice 12 12 piece in a wholesale you still get 20 rupees off per per juice right so like it's still the same going and buying it in Vishal or going and buying it from the wholesale market, right? So, but they, they sell in bulk. That's why they can give a lot of discounts like that, no? So even in your kind of business, if you can sell, if you are selling 100 now, if you can sell 300 in a month and, you know, give it a little cheaper price, I think that'll, that'll help, no? Yes. In your, your business, your kind of business, no? So that'll be my, I think, my advice for you, yeah. yeah.